may be seated. Mr. Smith, because General Bouchard, distinguished guests, inductee family members and friends, RMC alumni, officer cadets, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2017 Wall of Honor annual induction ceremony. Bienvenue à la cérémonie d'intronisation annuelle de 2017 au Mur d'Honneur. I am 27252, Officer Cadet Carl Lavoie, and I will be your Master of Ceremony today. Je suis 27252, l'élève officier Carl Lavoie, et je serai votre maître de cérémonie aujourd'hui. Before we begin, please note that your programs are written in both French and English so that you may follow along in the language of your choice. The citations will be read alternating English and French paragraphs. Avant de commencer, veuillez noter que vos programmes sont écrits en anglais et en français pour vous permettre de suivre la cérémonie selon la langue de votre choix. Par contre, les citations ne seront lues qu'une fois, attendant entre l'anglais et le français. I also wish to remind you of the reception for all attendees following the ceremony in the Military Personnel Generation HQ foyer, just up the walkway and to your left. Washrooms can be found in the same area. Nous vous rappelons qu'une réception pour tous suivra la cérémonie dans le vestibule du QG de la génération du personnel militaire en remontant le passage et vers votre gauche. The Wall of Honor was donated to the college to recognize publicly ex-cadets and others with college numbers who have made extraordinary contributions nationally and internationally in any and all walks of life, and have exhibited the qualities of truth, duty, and valor in their lives. Le mur d'honneur a été donné au collège pour reconnaître, en vue de tous, les anciens élèves officiers du collège et autres personnes avec un numéro de collège qui ont fait des contributions exceptionnelles à l'échelle nationale ou internationale dans n'importe quel domaine d'activité et ont démontré leur qualité de vérité, de devoir et de vaillance dans leur vie. It is intended that those recognized on the wall of honor inspire prospective recruits, current RMC students, RMC graduates, RMC staff and all Canadians to be the best that they can be. Des personnes honorées par le mur d'honneur sont projetées d'inspirer les recrues, les élèves existants du CMR, les gradués du CMR, le personnel du CMR et tous les Canadiens à faire de leur mieux. To date, there are 27 plaques on the wall. As it is too easy to forget them, we will now list them in order of college number. En ce moment, il y a 27 plaques sur le mur. Comme il est facile de les oublier, nous vous présenterons maintenant les personnes honorées des années précédentes en ordre de leur numéro du collège. 1-3, A.B. Perry. 8-5, William J. Stewart. 1-0-1, John Lang Weller. 7-4-9, the Honorable Henry Duncan Graham Crerer. 943, William Avery, Billy Bishop. 1032, Edson Lewis Miller, Tommy Burns. 1246, Sir Charles Falkland Lowen. 1596, Guy Granville Simmons. 1681, Walter L. Gordon. 1800, Artland de Montarville Molson. 1866, Charles Cecil Ingerson Merritt. 1921, George Brinton McClellan, Jr. 2357, William Dennis Whitaker. 2364, Leonard Joseph Birchall. 2399, William Moss Landemore. 2510, Edward Alfred Charles Ned Amy. 2791, Jean P. W. Ostigui. H2951, Ramsey Muir Withers. 3528, Paul David Manson. 4377, Richard Rick Joseph Evrard. 4860, Alfred John Garden Drummond de Chastelin. 7771, James William Leach. 7860, Romeo Antonius Dallaire. H8829, George Francis Gilman Stanley. 8833, Lennox John Leggett. 13738 Chris Austin Hadfield H15200 Joseph Gilles Lamontagne Today, two more plaques will be unveiled 5576 Lee and H2652 Smith J'inviterai notre commandant 18777 Brigadier Général Sébastien Bouchard à nous adresser la parole Mr. Britt Smith Senator Day The Lee family follow Serving and former Canadian Forces member, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us today at the Royal Military College of Canada for the 2017 Wall of Honor induction ceremony. 
RMC opened in 1876 with the idea of creating the future leaders of Canada. And there's no question that RMC has and continues to succeed in this endeavor. But how do we recognize the truly remarkable ex cadet of RMC and others with college number for their outstanding achievements and contributions? Contribution not only to what is now the Canadian Army Forces, but to our country, local communities and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the wall of honor that we have gathered around today is the answer. Since its creation in 2009, through the generous donation by the class of 63, the wall has succeeded in its intent to inspire RMC officer cadets, graduates, staff to strive for excellence with our motto, True Duty Valor, as their guide. Le mur d'honneur a été érigé et offert au collège en 2009 par la promotion de 63 lors de la rentrée de celle-ci dans la vieille brigade, un événement qui marque la 50e anniversaire des débuts d'une promotion au collège. Le mur a été érigé pour reconnaître les réalisations et les contributions exceptionnelles des anciens élèves officiers des collèges militaires royaux au service du Canada et du reste du monde. I'd like to thank the class of 63 for the significant contribution and effort of finding appropriate selection and honor of honorees. The class of 63 will now pass this responsibility for the wall of honor to another class, class of 75. Thanks to both classes for their, your commitment and leadership. I'd now like to take this time to acknowledge this year's incredible selection of honorees. Mr. Britt Smith entered Royal Military College in 1938. He bravely and selflessly served our country on the battlefield during World War II. Returning as a war hero, he practiced law in Kingston for many years. He has been recognized for his outstanding contribution to the community and fundraising efforts with United Way and is truly an inspiration for all of us. Sir, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Our second nominee today is Army Colonel Leonor Lee. Mr. Lee entered Royal Rose Military College in Victoria in September 1958. He was a very talented athlete and scholar. After serving in the public servant for many years, he funded what is now a household name, Lee Valley Tools. As a businessman and philanthropist, he is truly another remarkable individual that inspires all. The two persons intronized today receive this testimony in recognition of their profound integrity and their excellent professional. Like all persons who are in honor, they are a source of inspiration for us all. Their example nous invite à nous surpasser constamment et nous rappelle quelle influence nous pouvons avoir sur le cours des choses si nous travaillons avec acharnement et que nous employons nos talents au service de la planète. As the commander of the college, I'm privileged to be commanding RMC in today's induction ceremony and humbled to be among such a dynamic group of individuals who have truly taken the college motto, True Duty Valor. Thank you very much. Leonard Lee started life in a log cabin with no running water or electricity in Wadena, Saskatchewan, and never forgot those humble roots. Len entered Royal Roads Military College in September 1985 and starred on the senior rugby team. An aspiring pilot, he was awarded the RCAF Association Award of Merit as the top RCAF cadet in his second year, as well as the English Prize. At RMC in the fall of 1960, he played football and focused on his studies in economics. Il était prévu que l'un devienne commandant de l'escadre des élèves officiers comme pour l'année 1961 et 1962. Toutefois, un problème médical survenu pendant l'instruction d'été euh, en 1961, l'empêche de poursuivre son entraînement de pilote occupé le poste de commun. À l'automne, il est donc honorablement libéré du programme de formation des officiers de la force régulière. Len then attended Queen's University, graduating in 1963 with a Bachelor of Economics. Uh, after a, so a short stint with the Combined Investigation Branch of the Federal Department of Justice, he joined the Department of Trade and Commerce as a Foreign Service Officer. He served four years in Chicago as Vice Consul and Assistant Trade Commissioner, followed by two years as Trade Commissioner to Peru. Len worked with the federal government for a total of 16 years and was the director of Canadian Consumers Council and the National Dairy Council of Canada during that time. 
En 1978, l'enfant Lee Valley Tools Limited, une société canadienne de vente par correspondance du tir de travail de bois et de jardinage. L'entreprise de vente comblait le créneau de l'utile de qualité élevée au Canada et En 2017, l'entreprise compte 500 employés et 18 magasins à traverser le Canada et vend son matériel de peu partout aux États-Unis et dans plus d'un deuxième d'autre pays. Elle se plus de trois principales directeurs, soit l'interprète, la satisfaction de la clientèle et la participation des clients. De plus, l'employé a la latitude de régler les problèmes des clients à leur discrétion. En 1965, Len set up Virtus Tools Incorporated, a world leader in tool design and innovation, as the design and manufacturing arm of Lee Valley Tools. In 2017, it had 250 products and held 100 patents. Len also established Algrove Publishing Limited for the publication of quality woodworking literature and Kanika Design Incorporated, an innovative medical device company that specialized in designs for the mechanical manipulation of soft pallets, including cleft pallets in infants. Len founded another small company, Chestnut Tools, where he loved to research new tools. He became known in the woodworking fraternity as the expert on tool sharpening after publishing his Bible of the Industry, The Complete Guide to Sharpening, which sold more than 100,000 copies worldwide. Len Lee reçoit le prix de conception et de génie de Popular Mechanics en 1992, et un doctorat honorifique de l'Université de Carleton en 1999. En 2003, il a fait membre de l'Ordre du Canada par une réussite de temps de contrepreneur. En 2007, il reçoit un doctorat honorifique du Collège Royal Militaire Royal du Canada et en 2011, un doctorat honorifique de l'Université d'Ottawa. Lens envoie un autre dessin des médailles de Jubilee d'or et de Jubilee d'or diamant de Doraine. Et en 2015, il est intronisé au temple de la renommée de l'industrie, de la quincaillerie et de parc de ménager. Lens was appointed honorary colonel of 14 Air Maintenance Squadron in 14 Wing Greenwood, Nova Scotia, in April 2008, where he enjoyed time spent with the aircraft technicians. Len was always very active in not-for-profit organizations, a founding director of the Public Policy Forum and the secretary treasurer for it for the first 15 years. He also helped found the Woodworkers Alliance for Rainforest Protection, which became part of the Goodwood Alliance. He was the national director of the Nature Conservatory of Canada for five years and its vice chairman for two. He was a founding director of the Collegium of Work and Learning, which later became the Learning Partnership. Len donated the honorariums from his many speaking engagements to charities, including the United Way and the hospital in his adopted hometown of Amont. En tant qu'homme de vue à sa famille, d'amis et de bénévoles, Len a démontré des qualités exceptionnelles qui ont aussi contribué à sa réussite euh, en tant qu'homme d'affaires. En tant que leader naturel qui s'intéresse sincèrement à tout ce qu'il croissait, il a inspiré l'optimisme et l'honnêteté. Tu te tirerais sa voix. Il a toujours arbré un grand sens de l'humeur et plus que tout, il brisait la vérité. The company he started part-time from his kitchen table always stayed with him. When he entered the hospital in his final days, um, after a multi-year struggle with vascular dementia, Lund took three items, a tape measure, gloves, and a Lee Valley Tools ball cap. Len is survived by his wife, Lorraine, sons, Robin and James, and four grandchildren. The inscription on his plaque reads, entrepreneur, innovator, business leader, volunteer, philanthropist. Family members attending today include Len's widow, Lorraine, and their two sons, Robin and James. Their wives, Lucy and Jackie, grandchildren, Anakin and Philip, and Philip's wife, Isabel. Most of Len's class of 62 are also here for their 55th reunion. Les confrères diplômés de Len de la promotion de 1962 sont également ici pour leur 55e réunion. Len's classmate 5604 Ken Smee is invited to come forward and unveil Leonard Lee's plaque.
Born in Kingston, Ontario, Britt Smith entered RMC in 1938 and graduated two years later with a commission in the Royal Canadian Artillery. He served with the 8th Field Regiment in England, transferring to 4th Field Regiment with which he landed at Normandy in July 1944 as part of 2nd Canadian Infantry Division. La 2e Division d'Infanterie Canadienne faisait partie du 2e Corps Canadien et a été dirigée par le lieutenant général Guy Simmons. Elle a pris part à la prise de la crête de Verrières pendant l'opération Atlantique et à la rupture du cordon offensif de l'Allemagne pendant l'opération Spring. La bataille de la crête de Verrières était particulièrement impétuable. Sans égard pour sa propre sécurité, le capitaine Smith a joué un rôle essentiel à titre d'officier observateur avancé, ou à, en représentant quatre attaqués de l'ennemi. Il se voit décerner la croix militaire pour son leadership sur le feu d'ennemi. Dans le cadre de l'opération Spring, il a attaqué le Royal Hamilton Light Infantry avant d'être blessé par une mine anti-char et le tir de maîtrise. Captain Smith was hospitalized back to Canada, where he married Sally Caruthers, his fiancée of four years. Post-war, Britt studied law at Osgoode Hall and was called to the bar in 1948. He practiced law in Kingston and was made a Queen's Counsel in 1959. He received an Honorary Doctor of Laws, LLD, from RMC in 1989 and from Queen's University in 2009. Combatant, il a participé au développement du parc Strathcona et d'autres lotissements et en 1954, il constitue en société Homestead Land Holdings Limited, de laquelle il est toujours le président exécutif. La société est devenue l'une des trois plus vastes organisations de meubles d'habitation locatifs au Canada. While practicing law, he joined the Princess of Wales' own regiment as a company commander until 1954, later serving as the honorary lieutenant colonel from 1968 to 74, and as honorary colonel until 1985, returning to that appointment from 1992 to 95. He was an executive member of the RMC Colleges Club of Canada until 1957, until he became its president in 1983-84. During his term as president, he had Homestead built a new entrance to the college in collaboration with the club. En 1949, Britt est élu conseiller municipal de Kingston et remplit trois mandats. Il est président de Centrade en 1967 et en devient plus tard le président d'honneur. En 2006, il est intronisé au Temple de la renommée des affaires de Kingston. Il assume les fonctions de président de diverses campagnes de financement et reçu, reçoit plusieurs récompenses en reconnaissance de sa participation à des activités communautaires. Il est nommé membre honneur à vie du Barreau de Haut-Canada en 1998. Britt has honored the past while continuing to promote the future through his writing, including a monograph for Canadian military history on a foo at Trovatil Farm, 20 to the 21st of July, 1944, editing Kingston O Kingston, an anthology about early Kingston and Legend of the Lake, the story of the building, launching, and foundering of the 22-gun Brig Sloop Ontario in 1780. Philanthropic support has been a mainstay of Britt's work over the decades. His professional success enabled him to make multiple major donations through his foundation to help causes, causes to which he is committed. Healthcare, education, diagnostic equipment, and research have been causes he has tirelessly promoted and supported financially. He has made major donations to the Kingston Large Venue Entertainment Center, the Grand Theatre, the Marine Museum of the Great Lakes, the RMC Foundation, the Canadian Institute for the Blind, and numerous other organizations. He provided instrumental support for the building of a hospice for Kingston and supplied seed funding in anticipation of the building of a new museum for RMC. At Queen's University, he funded the Sally Smith Chair in Nursing and Chairs in Surgery, Surgical Research and Orthopedic Research, as well as providing support for sports. Britt et son épouse ont trois enfants, huit petits-enfants et neuf arrière-petits-enfants. 
celle et ceux de ses oncles qui ont obtenu un diplôme de CMA. The inscription on this plaque reads, Soldier, Entrepreneur, Community Leader, Philanthropist. Support here today for Mr. Smith includes his son Britt and his wife, friends, members of the Princess of Wales Regiment, members of the RCHA, and fellow gunners. I think old age is catching up on me. Yeah. I'll stop raining today, and uh, I've been, been admiring the masonry work on this wall. I'd like to have an apartment building that looked like that. <laughs> uh, uh, General Bouchard, fellow ex-cadets, uh, future ex-cadets, uh, mesdames et messieurs, merci beaucoup pour votre présence aujourd'hui. Uh, and uh, I also wish to thank the Wall of Honor Committee for their hard work. And, uh, I assure them that everybody's allowed to make the occasional mistake. <laughs> so that has to be here today. Now, Lynn Lee should be here, and if he was, I wouldn't have to make the speech, damn it. <laughs> but, but he ain't. Maybe he's up on the edge of a cloud there watching us. Members of the Lee family, uh, I'm very honored to be associ associated with Leonard. In fact, uh, although I never met him, Last month I was up at the Shaw Festival, and when I picked up my tickets, they said, oh, uh, Lee Valley Tools is uh, honoring all of the people who contributed to the festival, so you're upgraded to the second row, and here's two free tickets for a drink at the intermission. Thank you, Len. They, they were opening a new branch office in the, uh, the area, the Niagara of the Lake, I, I believe. Uh, another thing about Len is that uh, I have a very dear friend who's a carver, and I just happened to mention, I said, oh, Lee Valley Tools, and they are the salt of the earth. All the carvers swear by Lee Valley Tools. They're very delicate work. They have the best quality and the best assortment. Uh, anybody, everyone buys Lee Valley Tools, so we're so glad to have one of their branches here out in the Rio Can Center. A little plug there, Len. Um, so, uh, uh, I, I really don't feel that I belong in this illustrious company at all, but I do appreciate the honor, and I understand there's an obligation on me to offer some words of wisdom about my RMC experience and training. And uh, this is the easy as I had excellent instructors who prepared me for World War II, and, than for life on Civvy Street thereafter. And I'm glad to see Charlie Simmons sitting there because his father, General Guy Simmons, was my tactics professor in 1939. And he drilled into me the principles of war, which I think started out with people like Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, Napoleon, and Wellington. But I, I, your dad was a worthy successor. <laughs> one, of, one of these principles, maintenance of the aim, I translated into stick to the knitting, which for 60 years has been the motto of my private company. And even though we were tempted to get into other things like nursing homes or uh, hotels, retail malls, we always stuck to residential real estate in the form of apartment buildings. And that's part of the secret of the success of my company, the motto that I learned from General Simmons. Now, I have a pretty good company now, but I won't tell you how big it is or I won't tell you how many streets I have, because that would be bragging. <laughs> <laughs> but the second one of the principles of war, uh, concentration of force. I interpret that as using my efforts on limited cluster targets and sticking to Ontario, not spreading out too thin, uh, it worked in the Army, and it works in civilian life, and uh, to the others, uh, uh, intelligence, supply, and audacity, I've always kept them in mind, and especially audacity. Uh, audacity uh, uh, really means doing things what nobody in their right mind would ordinarily do. 
and uh, there, there is no room for the timid in business. Only the bold deserve the gold. I, I just made that one up. That's, uh, <laughs> write, it, write it down, somebody. <laughs> on, on my first day here as a recruit in 1938, John Mackay Sinclair, a fellow gunner later, a B Company sergeant, took us recruits around the college on an indoctrination tour and stopped on top of the earthworks at Fort Frederick and uh, said, look around you, this college is the finest place on God's green earth. It was then and it is today. I, I love this college. Um, he's, I think he meant this remark in several ways, but it is a beautiful piece of real estate. I would love to develop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, uh, no, 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 Things may have been a little different then, of course, they never were like they were in the old days, they never will be, but uh, we came out of this place with a certain stamp on us and a certain extra stiffness in our backbone, I think. Uh, so uh, I'm so proud of being an ex-cadet, and I, I'm sure all of my fellow ex-cadets are too. But the especially want to feel I should pay honor to the members of my class whose names are on the other side of the point on the, on the uh, memorial wall. Uh, uh, to my mind, those are our real heroes, and they include the names of a dozen of my class who died in World War II now. Uh, we were just out of the wrong time. We were all 19 or 20. We all wound up as platoon commanders or fighter pilots or deck officers on ships uh, or Many as, as platoon, did I say platoon commanders? No, oh, no sorry. But, but the first member of my class to die was Lou Jones, who was a magazine officer in HMS Hood. He went in the Royal Navy. The second one was Omar Gagnon, who was in a small RCN vessel that was sunk in the Bay of Biscay. And the third one was Ian McPherson, who went to the British Army and joined the Gurkha Regiment and was killed by the Japanese in Burma. Uh, at the F, my sp friend Spike Purdy was a troop commander in the Ontario Regiment. They stopped the landing craft where the water was too deep. He drove off the ramp and drowned. And th that was such a tragedy. He was the only one of our class that couldn't swim, damn it. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, Saint-Jacques Rousseau, uh, who didn't look at all like a soldier, so they made him into a spy, and they dropped him by parachute to help the French underground. Um, unfortunately, many of the ag agents were betrayed, and he was taken in prisoner by the, by the Gestapo, uh, tortured and garroted. Um, probably the, the most Tragic, tragic death of all, because his own people had betrayed him. Uh, Tom, Tom Bennett, our BSM, vanished over the Eastern Med when his aircraft was failed to report in. Six others were died in the Air Force over Europe, including my two classmates, who I'm named Patty Richardson and Frank Peebles. Uh, the Air Force were about 100% of my people, of my classmates. Two got away with just losing a leg, uh, one artillery, one armor, uh, and the others were killed in the infantry or in Northwest Europe. Now, I, I accept this honor really on behalf of my classmates. I, I, I think that uh, the class of 1938 uh, is a very, very special part of the ex cadet Club. And unfortunately, I'm the only one still alive, as far as I know, in <laughs> case some of these people who reported are missing turn up. You know, but I want to say that ex-cadets have made enormous contributions to the success of my company. In the Army, I should say, and I, the 4th Field Regiment 
had three successive ex-cadets as commanding officers starting when, with uh, Uncle Stanley Todd, Bill Fleury, and Bud Drury. Uh, the three battery commanders were all ex-cadets. I, for a period, was the adjutant and a couple of battery captains. At the COS conference, everybody was an ex-cadet. That's no wonder we were the best artillery regiment in the country. In, not in the country, hell, in the army. Um, also, ex-cadets have made an enormous contribution to the success of my company. Uh, Colonel Bill Sheriff, who was commandant up in Femi, uh, was, was my manager back in the 1960s after he got out. Uh, Buster Statham also who was a commandant up here, uh, did construction work in, for the company. And Archie Zagrodny uh, did our, all our mechanical engineering until he retired. I had trouble replacing him, damn it, shouldn't have quit. Uh, my dear friend Bill Turner, uh, a former commandant, uh, took on zone changes for me, and that is a really tough business in the development in industry. Uh, uh, Jamie Stewart, my classmate, uh, ran the construction division, and, uh, and Brigadier General Gord Seller was property manager all at the same time. Uh, one time I had two generals and a colonel on my team, so I really thought <laughs> I'd arrived. Uh, uh, but then they all retired at age 65, and bingo, I was all by myself. In conclusion, I could never repay the debt I own this college for the gifts it gave me and fortitude, perseverance, humility, understanding, appreciation, and pure nerve. It also gave me a great deal of good luck, which is evidenced by my business success and by my survival to this dreadful old age. So, uh, the big thing was that I would never have gotten my wife Sally Carruthers to marry me if it hadn't been for this college, because all the Carruthers women married ex-cadets down <laughs> through the years. Uh, Sally had eight uncles and half a dozen in-laws, all ex-cadets. Four of her uncles were here as, as cadets, and li we lived in Kingston, and they took classmates home to introduce them to their sisters, and all four sisters took the bait and married an ex-cadet. <laughs> <laughs> My three sisters, not, none of them married an ex-cadet, they married Queen students. <laughs> Well, one married a Harvard student. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, th thank God that uh, I was qualified or she would never have married me. So, so, in conclusion, this college is indeed the finest place on God's green earth, and I will continue to aver that. And uh, thank you for the honor you paid me today.